Late September here in the front yard of the homestead, and it is time to kick off the annual garden cleanup and redesign. We have a ton of Bermuda grass we've been removing. There's actually like uh, absolute boatload right about there. More than I've ever seen actually, quite discouraging. But what we're gonna do is prepare the garden for a couple of interesting changes. In the front yard, we're doing a very light redesign with some special new raised beds coming in. And then in the backyard, we're gonna do a much, much larger redesign with a new pattern for the backyard in-ground garden, as well as some other fun accoutrements. But there's the man himself, Jacques. We have to shift some of the birdies beds. We'll talk about why we're doing that right now. So Jacques, we are extending some beds here. Yep. This and one. redesigning the flow of this front yard. So this four by six bed is actually gonna come out to four by eight here. Yep. Which means that we need to move this bed over, which means that we need to take a panel out of this bed. <laughs> it's gonna be and a little bit of a project. Just so happens that we have hardcore plumbed in our PVC. Didn't think we'd be moving that. No, so we, did not. we need to do that. We need to remove this troll tomato that's been producing like absolute crazy. It's finally time for that to go. Paul's over there in the background. Say hi, Paul. Yeah. He is hitting with the most ragged shirt I've ever seen. What is going on with his shirt? <laughs> He's got, are you trying to like hulk me out here? I you mean, got, you know, <laughs> you're big, you're big, you know? When you're big, you're big. Anyways, Paul's helping out right now with, with slamming through some of this Bermuda. You can see a lot of it over there in the street. But let me just show you guys. I mean, this is quite discouraging. Look at the Bermuda in the front yard. It is bad. It is really bad. So we're at least trying to clear it out of this vista right here. Okay, the first step is to get this mint out of this bed, but I guarantee you when I pull this, it's actually gonna pull the entire soil out. Yep, I am correct. Ugh. This mint has come through and just absolutely colonized the area here. But that's fine. Actually, it's only gone about halfway down, but you can see how rhizomus the mint really gets. The reason why I have to do this is because I really need to get this PVC moved over and I can actually use this mint to propagate if I feel the need. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to see how many more tomatoes are on this bad boy right here. I've got at least a few of these guys left. Probably not too many, but now I can be rough with it and just rip it open. Not a bad little haul right there. I got a couple more in the backyard, but that's probably the last tomatoes for the season. We're actually just going to move this entire bed over <laughs> Yep, because it was too annoying, but I've got the old extendable loppers, and I'm hitting the Cecile Bruner with some very precise trimming, because if you take a look <laughs> at it, Chuck, I have to say, it's really grown in. It's crazy how much it's but grown But actually, in. a little too much, because look right up there. Yeah. It's a little wild. But so it's gonna, blooming again. Yeah, it, it, it is blooming. It's just... Interesting. It just looks too crazy now, so I'm going to trim it down to size. Yeah. All part of the front yard refresh. Back for day two, the Bermuda boys. I've got... Jock's favorite tool. I've got the Matic. What do you have? My new favorite is the potato fork. Yeah, it's talk vicious, about it. It's brutal. Show them. And here's what happens. You come in, you get your fork, you go, <laughs> and then you just pull. That was like a 7.5 on the Richter. Just the <laughs> repercussions of that. But yeah, you get all sorts of Bermuda BS just like that. Yeah. You make a little pile, you burn it later. You burn it. Yeah, we're actually going to burn <laughs> it. So take a look. This is how much we've done. We've done the whole front yard uh, garden, but we're going to try to get at least some portion over here. We're not going to get this entire meadow of Bermuda today because we'd probably be here until midnight and oh, still yeah. wouldn't get done. Uh, but I got to hit the mattock and get to it. Over here in the round bed that we need to move over, we figured we'd dig it out because if you remember, maybe three years ago now, I put in these logs and it's time to actually see what's left of the log. I have to say most of, the, most of it is left. I can kind of peel some of this off if I want and there's definitely some flaking, but the logs are more or less intact right now. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's actually quite interesting. We haven't had a lot of breakdown yet. You can see the surface right there. Looks pretty damn solid. It's a little squishy, a little soft. So I'd say maybe inch, half an inch is rotted away, but not much else. So over here in the raised beds, it is time to do a little bit of a cleanup. I'm not gonna do a full reset because like I said, we're installing something pretty special here soon, but these eggplants, are looking pretty good still for mid-September. I'm just cleaning up all the bottom. So removing all of the debris down below, that'll go in the compost. And then taking a look at some of the overgrowth, right? So taking a look here and saying like, you know, I do like the zinnias here. I do like them, but I have to be honest and say that the rest of them look terrible because you've got this powdery mildew all over. So I'm gonna make the executive decision to cut all these 
gonna cut the flowers, use those in some sort of little mini cut flower vase, and then pull the rest. Take a look at this pile of Bermuda. All of that was removed from the birdies beds area. Pretty insane actually to think about, and I guarantee there's more, but we're gonna have to pull it as we see it. But by the end of today, what we've done is we have moved that bed, we have replumbed it, we've set up for another bed that's about to come in, harvested off some of the late summer produce, started thinking about our fall seeds, none in yet. We're gonna keep this garden just a little bit longer. It's gonna hold on to that feeling because we do have some stuff ripening up still that is quite summery. But I do wanna show you in the back here, we actually have had some very good news and a little bit of scary news. So back here with the hens, I have the four hens that we have raised from chicks. Those are out in the coop now in a coop in coop method. We actually unbuilt and rebuilt the coop that we were using to take care of them indoors. But right over there by the pond, Earlier today, I saw crows dive bombing. I saw a hawk in the pond. I thought they had scared them off. I didn't think much of it. And then I came over here and I saw the hawk fly out of the run. So I wanna show you what happened. First of all, here are our four little hens. They are completely safe in here, completely safe. Looks like lobster's not that big a fan of them yet. And we're gonna hope that changes over time. And lobster really has been the antagonist. She's kind of pecked at them a little bit. She's not a fan of them coming into the flock, but take a look at Lav's back. Let me go over there. Lav, come here. You definitely deserve a treat after what's happened to you. Here. So look, take a look at her back right there. Right there, she is missing an entire patch of feathers. Uh, the hawk literally ripped them out of her back and it's super scary and I'm very fortunate that she's okay. She's totally fine. She's not injured in a serious way at all, but probably quite scared. But take a look. Look at the feathers in here. I think the hawk got in and was chased off by all the hens kind of ganging up on it, but it got in somehow. Uh, not somehow, it's literally very easy to get in. I just never thought that'd be a problem here at the homestead until right now. What you're gonna see this fall is probably a project with myself and Jacques figuring out how to secure this area from the air. But in the garden, this is the fall for improving the space, aesthetically, functionally, even just the garden design. So we're gonna be doing a lot of projects for the next three months, as most of you cannot garden, on ways to improve your garden and homestead for the next year. So that's coming, I'm very excited about it. I kinda of wanna get out here and start building some things, start designing some things, work with my hands in a non-garden fashion. Hope you guys are along for the journey. If there's anything you wanna see us cover in the next three months, let me know down below because I am ready to hit it hard. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.